Hello, everyone. We're doing the first talk of today's observability day. Um, we're going to talk about uh, the overload in observability data, uh, how to deal with it, and about our experience doing that. <clears throat> so we work um, in Red Hat on Kubernetes observability, mostly finding uh, relationships between different signals, insights, intelligence, and so on. So first, uh, check how many of you, raise your hand, have worked with time series data, Prometheus, Thanos, programmatically? Okay, well, <laughs> that's probably a redundant question to ask on observability day. But now, uh, how many of you have worked with any data science tools like probably in, in Python, Pandas, NumPy, TensorFlow, less? So you're the target audience. Uh, <clears throat> So uh, we're going to talk about um, tips and tricks, how to work with, uh, how to do data analysis, data science stuff for observability data specifically um, for time series. So we are, um, we work in general with all of the observability signal, uh, logs, metrics, alerts, um, traces and so on. And we talk with uh, the customers, um, admins of Kubernetes clusters, but we also talk with our internal SRE teams. So site, site reliability engineers who take care of uh, Kubernetes clusters for our customers. And over the years, we have accumulated some feedback from them that uh, they say it's difficult for them to operate uh, our uh, observability stack is difficult to find things. So uh, the um, theme is, um, so they say that there is a lot of data, so they, ha they have to deal with alerts, metrics, logs, events, configuration changes, day-to-day, -day, traces, and so on. So it's good that, our, uh, that we have a lot of observability signal, but it's just too much for them to um, figure out quickly what to do with it. And when they finally get paged in the middle of the night, they um, have an alert, they go check the associated metrics, they check the logs, uh, but what they usually see is the current symptoms after the problem has happened. But sometimes the real issue was the day before, a couple of weeks ago, so they have to go and check the history that is not always evident. <clears throat> and finally, uh, they manage thousands of Kubernetes clusters, and at any given moment, there is uh, one engineer responsible for up to 500 clusters, so if there is an issue, they're expected to solve it efficiently and fast. So, uh, as the fleet grows, as the amount of clusters grows, we cannot expect to scale the uh, SRE team as well, so it has to be more efficient. And this is how our SREs look when they have to, when they wake up at night and have to solve something. There's just so much things they have to take a look at. <clears throat> so what can we do to address these problems? Over the years, we've tried different approaches and you can probably guess the most popular uh, solution right now. So, but that doesn't always work. So, uh, lessons we've learned over the years is sometimes uh, a person who really knows the data uh, can do a simpler uh, analysis of the data, simple baseline model um, that is that performs and gives better, better insights than throwing terabytes of data, of unstructured data, at an AI model. We've also learned that while the dashboards, graphing, metrics, and so on is useful, it's uh, without proper downsampling recording rules to uh, make it easier to look back months, it's going to be really slow and you usually have to look at it metric per metric. And we found ourselves doing the same thing over and over. So getting um, raw Prometheus metrics, transforming them, downsampling, combining, and so on. So what we decided to do is uh, artificial intelligence is good and it has its own applications, but it's not always feasible and you don't always have the time. So we are trying to do what we say, what we call observability intelligence. Some of it is addressed by uh, AI models, uh, but some of it can be done by a simpler analysis by someone 
an engineer who knows the data well. So imagine a typical data scientist, which probably none of us are. <laughs> Uh, they spend months working on a specific problem, they get the data, they get acquainted with the data, they uh, reshape it, do some data engineering, then they start uh, trying out like five, ten different algorithms, then they do accuracy estimations. So they have all of those tools that they apply to the specific problem that is not native to them. And it usually takes months. So what we try to do is give uh, engineers in the field, SREs, uh, admins, who uh, know the platform, who know um, the data and can code some simpler tools uh, to distill the data in some manageable insights. So um, after all those years working with the telemetry data, we have accumulated some snippets of code to transform it, uh, to work with it, so we decided to gather it all together and publish it for other people to use. So as of now, it's mostly focused on the time series data, but Ivan will show uh, what the current state of the project is and share a bit on uh, where we plan to take it. So right now it's a Prometheus client that handles authentication, uh, fetching the data, it has caching because the if you want to get something over a longer period it will take longer time. So um, it also converts from um, native format to more data science native formats like uh, pandas um, data frames. It also has, we had to add some domain-specific features like for handling alerts, it has visual visualizations, and for testing some analysis, we also added simulations, so you don't al always have to rely on the live data. And now Ivan will show the demo for what it can do. Okay, thank you very much, Katya. Uh, let me switch to some live demo thing. Who doesn't like live demos? and all the things that can go wrong. So uh, uh, the time uh, seems to be good, perfect. So I'll go uh, through what we have right now uh, in a library called Opsynth, uh, which we just uh, released and it's basically taking all these lessons and tools and approaches that we've learned and happened to copy over and over over the last couple of years and put it into one library and we hope that this would be able to give you more tools that you could actually get hands on the data science and see how it actually can help you with working with the observability data and it's not that complicated as it might sound at, at the beginning. So you can see that I'm doing data science because I have a Jupyter Notebook opened and you know when somebody has a Jupyter Notebook opened, he's doing data science. Uh, so this is the notebook that you actually get when you get to the repository that we have there. You will get the links at the end. Uh, is in opsynth slash opsynth uh, GitHub. So don't worry. You don't need to take photos of this and then trying to rewrite it at home. Uh, you will get everything uh, as as I do, and you should be able to to run it. So uh, I would act as I would be talking to Prometheus, real Prometheus. But I you know I like adventures, but not that much. So I actually have used one of the features of the opsynth which is being able to simulate the data as it were real. So actually I prepared synthetic data that act as some alerts that were happening in the fleet of clusters and I will be doing the presentation on top of that. But don't worry, we don't do it just because you know, we formatted the data nicely so it fits well. You should be able to replicate the same thing and we do the same thing with real data. It's just more convenient for presentation as well as for testing and you know, other stuff to have tools for synthetic data as well. So uh, just keep that in mind. So the first thing that you need to do is load the data. So I, I actually chosen to uh, load the dates uh, uh, or the data uh, between two dates. And the first thing is basic, basically just preparing the client code. So we have the client that talks to the Prometheus and we have a wrapper class on top of that. If you are not familiar with Python too much, don't worry, it's, it's not really that complicated. It's just some uh, loading class that handles some additional functionality such as splitting the queries over a longer period of time. If you want to load uh, weeks or months or even a year worth of data from Prometheus or tunnels that we are using, you might 
find that it's not that efficient to do it at once. You just have so much, so much data that you, you don't want to you know, spend too much or uh, you usually can overload your, overload your cluster. And you can either turn the data into data like I do it this way, but you can also just chunk the queries over you know, per days and then load the data one at a time. And that's what we are doing here uh, as well. I could enable caching, so if I need to repeat that or I want to somebody else to replicate what I've done, I can enable the caching and the next run of the notebook actually would be much faster because uh, uh, instead of reaching to the live cluster or, or live Prometheus instance, I would have the data locally already. So that's just the preparation part and then I would load the alerts data from Prometheus itself. Uh, you can see it run quickly because this time I'm actually using the synthetic or op-synthetic data here. And you would get something that you would kind of expect. Uh, we have the columns that represent the labels from the metric, uh, from the alerts in this case. And we have the values which look very similar to what the uh, vector uh, ranges look like in Prometheus. So we have the timestamp and the value. In this case, it's just you know, uh, one as the alert is firing. So uh, not, nothing so fancy uh, yet. But this is not the best format to start working with getting some insights. And what we'll be doing here is trying to find relations between alerts. What you might observe, especially in Kubernetes world, but I guess it's pretty common uh, whatever you are operating, uh, it's usually not that just one alert fires and it represents the problem. Many times the alerts are more symptomatic and the root cause actually might cause more alerts to happen at the same time. So what we try to do is actually identify the alerts that happened around the same time and then finding relations between them. And data science turns out to be pretty efficient on actually doing uh, this, but it's not for free. You need to do some, some work first. So what we will do first is turning the, kind of this uh, time series into something more convenient to work with so we'll do some data transformation. So uh, what Opsynth does is providing some functionality, some, some methods that help, help to switch the alerts ranges collection or the, the alert ranges into the intervals. So uh, out of the box, you turn this, which is just, you know, the, this timestamp is firing, this timestamp is firing. You turn it into each timestamp or each time series and knowing when it started and when it ended, which is pretty convenient, especially for the alerts. Uh, we, we always need to do something like that. Uh, for our use case, it's much more uh, useful way of working with the data set. Once we have this, uh, we can combine this kind of daily data together. We still, like, you might remember that we loaded the data one day at a time, so we have actually the data ranges in collection. Uh, and we want to concat them together. So in, in the next cell, we'll actually do that. Again, another function from the library. And we'll also add the resolution time to the end of the alert, just for cases where the alert happens there just at one timestamp. So we'll do just some corrections. Again, something that we've learned over the time. Uh, so now, like a similar thing, but we have over the whole period of time, you can now start doing some data science on top of that. So in order to do that, we need to somehow identify each alert, give it some, like, what are the most important parts of the alert that represent the issue? Because sometimes you may, might have the, just, you know, the instance or the pod or container name or pod name or some, some random value that doesn't help you much when doing the uh, aggregations. So we picked, like, what are the most important parts of the alert and we uh, assigned the alert ID based on that. So in this case, which is the instance ID, which is supposed to be, you, know, you are running the same service in multiple instances, and then the alert name uh, that, that represents the issue. And uh, once we have that, we can actually visualize that. That's something very powerful. Like we've, another thing that we've learned that sometimes just doing the right visualization and having, being able to do it quickly helps you a lot of time. Like not in this case, because it, you just, you might not even see the noise, uh, but I can just zoom it in to show you like how it looks like. So basically, we have different alerts that are happening. For some reason, cursor is not showing up here for me, but I, I can do it anyways. So uh, we can see that some alert happened. It started at May 20, 
uh, March 20, which is tomorrow, uh, and uh, it lasts for 30 days. Again, I'm working with the Syntec data. It will be more, more up to date tomorrow than, than it was today. We are looking into the future. Uh, anyways, uh, this is one particular instance, and you can, you can see the example of some uh, problem happening, multiple others firing. This is the case that we would be identifying as one group. So in the next cell, we'll actually do that, and we'll do something that data scientists call, call one-hot encoding, which is a very fun, fancy, fancy name, but uh, which basically just tells for each alert that we have here to assign one or zero, depending whether it was happening in a particular situation or not. So for example, in this particular group, there was one instance that had the cube deployment replica mismatch and cube not, uh, node not ready at the same time, so we have two ones there and nothing else uh, instead. And you can think about it as the coordinates in multidimensional space. Again, I, I like talking about this stuff. Uh, so you can imagine uh, how much, like 30 dimensional space and you know, each alert having some dots there in this nice 30 dimensional uh, vector space. So it's not that easy to think about these things but again, uh, opt for the rescue. So another thing that we implemented there is applying dimension dimensionality reduction and uh, clustering algorithms, basically using those tools that in, are available in Python data ecosystem and using it for our benefits. So once we do that, we turn this 30 dimensional vector space into three uh, dimensional vector space here which is nicely visualized here. Another thing that I, I like about Python and Plotly is this interactive things, where you can see that uh, each dot represents some, some alerts, like the Elasticsearch JVM heap use high, whatever it means. And we see here some three dots that are actually distinct from each other. And those were, you know, that we actually prepared to be, we expected to be in this group. That's why it's how, how we synthesize the data. But in real case, you would start seeing these clusters of, of different issues. I can actually show you uh, the similar or same graph here, which uh, with some more real, real world uh, data, you can see uh, it's much richer, but you can see the clusters there as well. So they actually are able to represent these kind of issues. But getting to our nice little demo, we have three things, and you, you know, <laughs> made it to make sense, so we have the cube not, node not ready as one alert, and we have target down as another one for people working with, with Prometheus. They, they've seen this kind of combination before, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but we have other things that we have there in this data set that are still kind of hidden. For example, the Elasticsearch JVM heap uh, use high, which is another example that actually chosen to, that should be part of this group. and. For some reason, it's not there yet. Like this is kind of noise of other alerts that were there, and there was not enough relation between each other. So let's let's see what 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 caused that. Uh, so if we actually visualize some of the situation with the, this particle example, we see one thing that sometimes happens with your alerts, which is the alert being flapping. You know, the for one reason or another, the alert can can go up or down or up and down depending on the metric. Sometimes you can't avoid that. It's just you know, part of uh, how things are. And when you are doing then the data science on top of that, it makes some troubles uh, like this. Uh, it adds some additional groups that are actually not really a group because in this particular time, uh, let me see here, like the issue was already there. The fact that the alert was uh, hitting or started at 413 was just because of the flappiness, but it really started much sooner. So another thing that we have there in Opsynth is some mechanisms to uh, combine these together. So after we do this kind of flapping reduction, we even for this flapping thing, we know when it started and we can treat it as any other thing that we, we have there. Uh, so we just reapply the same mechanism as we had before. This is the, the previous visualization of the clustering. And after we do the flapping reduction, uh, we have a bit different picture. Uh, it's similar, but, and, and we have, you know, these things that the target down, cube not uh, down, it was there before. But now the new kit on the block is here, 
where the Elasticsearch related alerts happen to be in a separate cluster as well. So this shows, or uh, this is an example of how doing some additional processing at the beginning can lead you to more insights regardless of how fancy algorithm you put on top of that. So sometimes the data cleaning and visualizations are much more important than uh, using some very sophisticated uh, data science machine learning approaches to do the stuff. Otherwise, you can also have garbage in and garbage out. So this is the end of the demo. Again, you can go to, the, to our repository and run the same thing. As we are actually using the synthetic data, you should be able to, uh, to do it really as, as we did. But hopefully, you would also be able to plug it into your infrastructure and see how your alerts look, look like. So that's for the demo part. And let me just finish with, with the slides here as well. So what now? You've seen what we've done so far. Uh, but you know, th this is really just a beginning. And the vision, and we are really curious whether it's something that would be interesting for many people here, or you know, some people that might be doing similar stuff, is to build this kind of tool that would be able to plug observability signal in one place, or talking Prometheus tunnels, thinking about Loki and you know, some, some other nice logos that we could put there, combining the tools that we have in Python data, uh, uh, data science ecosystem. We already are using Pandas, Plotly, even Scikit-Learn, and again, much more tools are available there, and use that to synthesize and distill the insights from the observability data. And the Opsint is quite a nice name for that. So again, like we have really, we are at the beginning of this thing. I actually paid the plain internet just for the sake of this picture so that I pushed the first version from the cloud. So this is really kind of cloud native. Uh, you can't get more cloud native than, than this. So we, we released the first version yesterday. And we invite you to uh, think about that, talk to us, give us feedback, think about like your use cases, you know, what, think what could be uh, possible, and let's see if we could uh, put this into something that could be reused across, across the community. And we are getting to the end of the, of the talk, and now it's place for your questions. Are there any questions? If, if there are, there are two microphones that you can use to ask them. In, uh, otherwise, we are still the, uh, here, the whole conference, so feel free to reach out to us, and uh, we can talk much more about like, uh, what are or what would be your thoughts. Thank you very much.